Most of the kids at school were mean to Yasmin. They liked to make fun of her and her tattered, hand-me-down Hello Kitty school bag. The bottom left stem of the letter H had faded away, which made it look like the letter Y. The bag now read Yellow Kitty underneath the letters. The once white face of Kitty had turned yellow. The bag used to belong to Yasmin's older sister, and her mother didn't want to waste money buying a new one for Yasmin. Her mother would say, if it still works, it stays. Yasmin hated the bag, as it was the single reason behind her nickname in school, Yellow Yazzie. That's what the mean kids called her. It was recess time in school. All the other kids were seen eating, talking, shouting or playing. Yasmin? was sitting alone at her usual spot next to the broken drain. She regarded the spot as her quiet, personal oasis. Her mother had prepared sandwiches for her that day. They were usually very good, but this time looked anything but. The sandwich had somehow made its way to the bottom of her bag, squished flat. It looked extremely unappetizing. Bread, butter, Tuna and sweet corn fused together into a horrendous mess. Although she was hungry, Yasmin felt like she had already lost her appetite. Normally, the other school kids would completely ignore her and Yasmin didn't mind that. In fact, she rather preferred it that way. But today wasn't one of those days. Yellow Yazzie, yellow Yazzie, came the familiar chant. Yasmin's day was about to turn into a disaster as she recognized the voices. It was Tina, Ariana and Nile, Yasmin's classmates and the meanest kids in school. The three of them were inseparable and their favorite pastime was to make Yasmin's life a living hell. Tina, the alpha of the trio asked Yasmin what she was doing in the canteen. Yasmin assured them that she was just having her meal as her eyes looked for an opening to run away. Tina pointed at Yasmin's sandwich, asking her whether that's the meal she meant. Ariana and Nile looked at each other and giggled. They were disgusted by the sandwich. With a smile, Tina told Yasmin that she would be punished for being near the canteen. Ariana and Nile grabbed Yasmin by the collar and hounded her across the field. Yasmin had no choice but to follow them as they made their way to the creepy wooden shed at the back of the school. Rumor has it that someone was once murdered there and it is now haunted. Yasmin begged Tina to let her go. Tina said she could, but only after Yasmin finished her sandwich that she had absentmindedly held on from the canteen. Yasmin shook her head in defiance, not wanting to eat the sandwich. Tina instructed her friends to hold Yasmin down and they pinned Yasmin to the shed wall. Yasmin tried to squirm her way out of their grip. With a sickening smile, Tina took the sandwich and proceeded to shove it down Yasmin's mouth. They laughed as Yasmin began to gag. Yasmin felt like retching, but she somehow managed to stop herself from vomiting. The trio let go of Yasmin and left her kneeling down by the shed. The bell rang, signaling the end of recess. Yasmin stood in front of the shed unable to move. Yasmin eventually made her way back to class. She sat alone as no one wanted to sit next to her. The first session after recess was show and tell. Their teacher had told everyone to bring something interesting to show to the rest of the class. Yasmin began to fidget. Her turn was coming up next. A friend had promised to help her out in class for show and tell but she was nowhere to be seen. Suddenly, the fluorescent lights overhead flickered. Outside, the sky turned dark. Clouds enveloped the sky and thunder can be heard. Birds flew away, seeking shelter. In class, the door flung open with a bang that startled everyone and in walked a pretty girl in her late teens. She was wearing an old-fashioned white dress and had frizzled dark hair that came down to her waist. Meanwhile, everyone in class rose in terror. The teacher had a puzzled look on her face. 
but only Yasmin broke into a huge smile. She was delighted to see her friend, Penny. They hugged each other as Penny looked at Yasmin with affection. Penny asked Yasmin if she remembered the scrunchie Yasmin had lent her. Yasmin nodded. Penny thanked Yasmin for being kind enough to let her borrow the scrunchie when they kept getting tangled. Penny thanked Yasmin for letting her use the scrunchie and told her that she has washed it. She handed Yasmin the clean pink scrunchie. Yasmin told Penny that she can keep it as she had gotten a new one. Penny thanked her again and proceeded to tie her own frizzled hair with the pink scrunchie. Then, Yasmin asked Penny if she could help her with a little problem, gesturing towards everyone in the room. Penny winked at Yasmin and whispered that she would do her thing. Suddenly, the doors and windows slammed shut. The temperature dropped. The classroom was dead quiet as all eyes were on her. Penny dug her fingernails deep into the skin just below her neck. Slowly, Penny peeled the skin away from her neck to her neckline. She then pried apart the tendons and detached the neck muscles from her collarbone and let it all hang loose. The teacher collapsed as she saw what looked like a grotesque giant Raphalasia flower necklace made of skin and muscles around Penny's neck. Some of the kids screamed in horror while others recited desperate prayers. With a gentle pull, Penny snapped her collarbones from the sternum and hoisted a trail of inner organs out of her body. Nestled between the lungs was a heart beating strongly in an almost hypnotic rhythm. Penny was a penangal. Yasmin could see a pair of lungs and tangled intestines that were slimy and glistening red. Screams filled the air as some people inside the classroom tried to unsuccessfully open the doors and escape. Penny's head floated across the room. As she passed, her dangling intestines grazed on some furnitures, leaving behind bloody stains. The intestines kept getting tangled everywhere. Everyone screamed as Penny's head hovered near them. Penny roared and her voice echoed within the classroom walls. Everyone froze in place, their minds disconnected from their bodies. Then Penny's cold eyes locked on Tina as she hovered nearer. Penny called Tina out for bullying her friend as Tina shook violently in her chair, still unable to move. Penny threatened Tina that she would haunt her where she lived, wherever she went, and even in her sleep. If Tina picked on Yasmin again, Penny ensured that Tina understood her. Satisfied, Penny released her hold on the room. Tina had liquid the color of yellow kitty running down her pinafore and pooling around her shoes. Ariana had gone ultrasonic, crying but with no audible sound coming out of her mouth. Nylee had her hands over her ears and she was rocking to and fro on her chair, mumbling over and over that she won't disturb Yasmin. Penny hovered back into her outstretched hands. With an ease born from years of practice, she maneuvered her inner organs through the hole on top of her body and gently lowered her head down into her neck. She clicked her collarbone back into place and carefully placed the muscles and skin back in their original positions. Penny told Yasmin that she had to leave and would see her at their usual place. Yasmin nodded and thanked Penny for making time for her show and tell. The girls hugged each other. It was obvious to anyone watching that they had a very special bond between them. Penny turned and gave Tina a final glare. She gestured with two fingers. I have my eyes on you. And with that, she simply walked out of the classroom. As if a spell had been lifted, the intense fear around the room began to disappear. Outside, the dark clouds disappeared and the sun shone down on the world. All eyes were on Yasmin as she calmly sat down. She took out her Nancy Drew book from inside Yellow Kitty and began reading, a half smile on her lips.